Honey seems to have an interesting effect. It seems to decrease fat cell size, and it also seems to decrease the number of fat cells when used as an intervention. And there's some evidence to back this up. We're gonna look at human model studies. We're gonna look at a lot of rodent model studies because they're very controlled and it helps us uh, kind of understand the mechanisms a bit more. But it's looking more and more like honey is not just not sugar. Well, it's sugar, but it's not the same as sugar. But it also might have benefits above and beyond what we look at it for. It's not just a carbohydrate source. It actually has some additional benefits. So let's look at this first study that was published in the journal Frontiers in Nutrition. It was a systematic review, looked at nine studies, six of which were human, three of which were rodent model, and it really tells us a lot about honey and how it interacts with our fat cells. And after today's video, I put a link down below for 10% off Armra Colostrum. I'm a big fan of colostrum. The hard part is it's hard to get the real stuff. And if you do get colostrum, a lot of times it is treated at such a high temperature that it kills off sort of the bioavailable properties of it. Like we want the bioactive compounds. Armra has over 400 bioactive compounds in it because they utilize a cold pasteurization process. So they use a cold treatment to process it. So a cold process that doesn't expose it to a lot of heat, meaning you're left with the benefits that you're seeking out from colostrum. I first learned about colostrum when I was dealing with some serious gut health issues. I was dealing with a lot of problems and it sent me course correct. So since then I was a believer, but then you start looking at the literature surrounding colostrum and it's pretty darn awesome. So that link down below is for 10% off and it is tryarmra.com slash Thomas. Okay, so now we get into the science here. So what this study did, or multiple studies, is they looked at the intervention with honey and how it impacted fat cell size and fat cell number. First things first, generally speaking, what they found across the board, but especially in the animal models where it was like easier to control, honey resulted in a decrease in body weight, decrease in body fat, but also in a decrease adipocyte size, like a decrease in fat cell size, meaning there was legitimate like reduction in the size of the adipocyte. Now we have to look at the mechanism. We have to understand how fat cells can make us fat. Like what happens here? So first you have hypertrophy. Maybe you've heard of muscle hypertrophy. Well, fat cells have hypertrophy too. It's where they simply grow. And most of the time we have like a finite amount of fat cells. We can get new fat cells for sure, but generally we have our amount, our set amount, and then they just grow larger and larger and larger. And then sometimes they can even burst. Okay, but there is such a thing called hyperplasia where you actually create new fat cells. Sometimes when a fat cell gets so big, it can create more, or you can have unique circumstances in which you actually create new ones. So we're learning more and more each day. But what does honey have to do with either of these things? So for this, we look at a study that was published in Letters in Drug Design and Discovery. Okay, and they found that adding honey into the equation made a pretty big difference in overall fat cell size. So they gave rats a standard diet, a standard diet plus honey, or a diet plus sugar water. Okay, the honey group saw the reduction in fat cell size compared to the other groups. Interesting. So honey doesn't seem to just be sugar. And there seems to be other factors than just simple thermodynamics here. So why is it that honey shrinks fat cells, but the sugar water did not? And why is it that adding a sugar or a carbohydrate in is actually decreasing a fat cell? There's a lot of reasons. Maybe it decreased intake. Maybe it actually had an enzymatic effect. Maybe it's the antioxidants. Let's learn some more. There was another study that was published and it was done in rats and they gave varying dosages of honey. Okay, like a thousand milligrams per kilogram, 500 milligrams per kilogram, different dosages to kind of see as an intervention if this would have any effect on the obese rats actual fat cells and their total fat mass. All groups that had honey had a reduction in the number of fat cells. So the intervention groups that had honey in somewhat of a dose dependent fashion they ended up having a reduction in the number, not the size, but the number of fat cells. Okay, I'm really curious to know what's going on. And we do have some literature to help us understand the mechanisms here. So now we look at a study that was published in Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine. This looked at an intervention on rats, once again, with Orlistat, which is a common or used to be more common obesity drug, obviously with honey or placebo. It was a four week long study. But here's the real banger. They actually found that certain types of honey increased food intake. It increased the food intake. So holy cow, this is not good. This is exactly what we would expect honey to do. It's gonna cause them to gain weight. 
er, it did not cause them to gain weight. They actually lost more weight even though their food intake was higher. But what about calories in, calories out thermodynamics? Well, that still matters, but mechanistically what they've determined here is that it increased the energy efficiency. In other, wise, in other words, basically being able to consume this kind of food, the body was able to convert it into energy more efficiently. If you're less efficient at turning it into energy, then you're left with potential storage, right? It's like being able to actually get all the energy so you can use it compared to extra being wasted and potentially stored. That's the strongest hunch that we have based on the mechanisms here is that the energy efficiency was good. Now, as we get towards the end of this video, we'll talk about the specific kinds of honey that might be better to use. Because in this particular case, it was, I think it's called gelum or gelum honey, G-E-L-A-M. So that seems to be a unique kind of honey, but not one that you can get everywhere. So we'll talk about different options too. But let's look at another reason as to why this could be happening. And that we turn to a study published in Nutrients. This study was cool because it looked at subjects with metabolic syndrome. Because the first thing that people say if I tell them that honey could be decent for them is they say, well, wait a minute. No, I'm watching my blood sugar. Okay, well, it's not always gonna be that case. Like if you have metabolic syndrome, having some good carbohydrates could actually be beneficial, but you could also be someone that would be better off not having carbohydrates. Don't get me wrong, I came from like 10 years of doing keto to get my metabolism straight after being overweight, so I get it. But let's look at the big picture here. I'm gonna read you an excerpt from the study that the researchers said. Quote, honey intake reduces blood sugar levels and prevents excessive weight gain. And as a side, it also increases insulin sensitivity. So interestingly enough, they're adding sugar carbohydrates in, but they're increasing their insulin sensitivity. That sounds like a win-win to me. So now we look at a study that's published in the Journal of Medicinal Foods, a study done in humans, short-term intervention, where they gave honey or dextrose, and then 30 minutes later, they measured what was happening with their blood sugar. Without fail, the honey group ended up with lower blood sugar levels. Now, dextrose is higher glycemic technically, but the fact that the honey had a gentler curve and didn't spike as high tells us, okay, as a sweetener, maybe honey's a better option than other sugar options. Is it better than monk fruit or stevia or allulose? Not necessarily. It absolutely depends on what your use case is. But the other things we have to look at is there are antioxidants and compounds in honey that affect our enzymes and how we utilize carbohydrates. For example, there is approximately a 77% reduction in alpha amylase activity and approximately an 80% attenuation when it comes down to alpha glucosidase. So what that means is that we have less of the enzymes that break down sugar, so we might quite literally either ferment more sugar and feed our gut bacteria or poop it out because less of it is actually getting turned into calories. So you combine the fact that maybe less is getting turned into calories or absorbed along with the fact that what does get absorbed has a strong energy efficiency, well, you could be in a really great spot. Okay, one of the best honeys that you can consume is raw buckwheat honey. Raw buckwheat honey has some of the highest antioxidant contents. It's also one of the slightly lower sugar content, but it doesn't really matter all that much. Next up is gonna be, uh, gonna be manuka honey. Again, one of the highest antioxidant, but also has antimicrobial properties, antibacterial properties, so a really good compound overall for a lot of different things. So if you're looking for something more supplemental versus what to sweeten with, because it's very expensive, go manuka honey. Next up, always wanna choose any kind of organic honey. Like an organic clover honey is an inexpensive organic honey. I say inexpensive because in the grand scheme of things, like organic clover is probably gonna be one of the cheaper organic honeys. I would highly recommend going for organic practice when it goes to honey because the pasteurization, the processing that happens with regular honey, in just that industrial sense, there's a lot of things added to it and you end up with basically just heated up sugar. And that is the real deal. Next up is straight up raw honey. Raw honey is gonna have the bee pollen in it. It might have some of the beeswax left in it. You get some of the propolis. You get some of these things that are in it that make it more of a full spectrum food with a full food matrix, not to mention the highest possible antioxidant properties because it's not getting denatured by the heat. Okay, now my recommendation with honey, I do not recommend that you sweeten everything with honey. I recommend that you add two to three to four tablespoons per day and you account for those carbohydrates significantly. Like you count for them and you make sure that you are deliberate about how much you have. Because yes, there's still carbohydrates and if you're watching those, you can go overboard. So if I say I allow 100 grams of carbohydrates, I'm going to allocate some of that to honey. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.